Hi, my name is Phil Roach. I'm a sculptor from Tacoma, Washington that works in dioramas and I'm here as a recent collaborator with Crab Devil and the Peninsularium. A friend of mine who is also another Crab Devil collaborator, John Bird, gave me a call one day and said, hey, uh, there's this new museum going in in Tampa called the Peninsularium, and I think you need to apply for this because it's right up your alley. It's a interactive, immersive experience. You go in and it's, you know, installation art, it's experience, uh, and you're immersed into these environments. And it's kind of the type of situation I have always wanted to be involved with. I uh, have always been interested in dioramas. Uh, ever since I was a kid, going to, on field trips in school to the Steinhardt Aquarium, uh, seeing their uh, full-size dioramas, it always had fascinated me. Then we took a little trip behind the actual dioramas themselves, and that's where I was really fascinated. Uh, just the building, the construction of the behind the scenes views of these very intricate and well done dioramas on one side. And then when you go behind, you would see the plaster and the wires and the lumber. And it was just an interesting thing. I wasn't quite sure which I was more fascinated with, the actual interior intention or the backs of these things. So that really kind of plays into the work that I do now. It's kind of uh, artwork that has two personalities uh, that I really enjoy. Well, I, my ideas come from all sorts of directions and places. I do rely quite a bit on my dreams. Uh, at the same time, it's just walking down the street every day and checking stuff out. Um, one of the things I really rely on is narrative or implied narrative. Uh, I enjoy seeing objects that have no particular lead in or, or relevance. And then it's kind of our human nature to create narrative where it, it doesn't exist. You see a suitcase on the side of the road, immediately your brain starts making up stories, starts filling in the blanks. So that suitcase, is it on the corner because somebody's going to the airport? Or is a child, you know, a son going off to college or something like that? And so you're, we can't help it, but we start making these stories up to fill in the gaps and it's kind of a need for us to know and yeah that's kind of really what my work relies on is this implied narrative and let the audience come up with their stories and fill in the blanks themselves. The, the work is is based on local folk, folklore and it's based on um, the mini lights of St. Petersburg. Before I came out and started the work, or started making the work, uh, I started doing some research online. And I, so I found the story of the mini lights of St. Petersburg. Basically the story is the mini lights are these little men, little kind of green men that are really strong that can assume balls of light. And the story goes that if you say mini lights, mini lights come out tonight three times, mini lights, the mini lights. mini lights, the little men will come get you and drag you into the sewers or into Booker Creek over in St. Petersburg and take you back to a witch. So I took that story and kind of ran with it. And, but then I had to kind of throw my own 
twist on it to make make it my own. And then I started thinking about the fact that NASA is not that far away from here and a big staple of, of Florida. So I thought maybe what if the witch is, say, a scientist that was studying things like black holes and singularities. And uh, so I, I kind of pl I'm playing with the idea of that these things being black holes and that they're sucking people in to these, sending them to other dimensions. Also, maybe these black holes are responsible for, say, the sinkholes that are opening up around here. The town of Sefner, Florida, near Tampa, where last night the earth opened up as it does increasingly and thousands of times every year in this country. This time it swallowed a 37-year-old man as he slept in his home. Our report tonight from NBC's Gabe Gutierrez. In his bed, one minute, gone the next. Of the four pieces that are here, I did one that is a bedroom scene. And basically when you look inside, you see a bedroom and it's almost as if you're in bed. And the wall, the corner of the room is transforming into these caverns and tunnels. Uh, and then there's a figure somewhere in the room that is, is kind of like one of the little mini lights people that's it kind of crouching in the corner, but you can barely see him. Uh, another piece is I decided to portray the sewers that the mini lights would bring you down into on your way to the witch. Um, another piece is a sea cave with one of the mini light black holes floating in the middle of it and uh, showing you different dimensions of um, what the mini lights are kind of experiencing. Uh, then another piece I ended up doing is a uh, rendition of a, a sinkhole and it looks as if a sinkhole had just opened up and a house has been swallowed by this sinkhole and it, the perspective is, is as if you're falling with the house and there are three mini lights, three orbs, three little black holes that are surrounding the house as it looks like it's falling. And you aren't quite sure if they're just there or if they're somehow shepherding or guiding the house down the hole into, say, another dimension. So my work relies on the use of large peepholes. I've been using them for quite a while. I used to put them in walls and looking in the wall to the other side to look like it's exposing different rooms. And so I kind of like the idea of punching a hole in these paintings, which is also kind of punching the hole into the whole concept and maybe the dogma of painting in general. And uh, you would look through the painting, you'd look in and you would see, say, a bedroom scene or a parking garage or something like that. And the painting that you were looking through, a miniature version of that same painting would be somewhere inside of that room. So I kind of like that play of real, real size and throwing the person into the space and saying, oh, there's this, that, that's the same painting. you have to actually view through these things. And so it, it makes people contort themselves or get on their hands and knees to look at a low one. Once you know that the peephole is there, you really kind of have to look through all of them. It's kind of in our human nature. Uh, I, I play a lot with voyeurism in, in my work and the, our tendencies as a species for voyeurism. And voyeurism is an interesting aspect of us being humans and I feel as if it's something that is that we're genetically wired for. Uh, I think it's across the board uh, throughout cultures and people in general and I really feel like it's a need to know. We're curious beings and one of the 
thrills I do get is when I create the work and people are experiencing my work, I enjoy playing the fly on the wall. I don't, I, I, I like to sit back and let people look at the work without knowing who I am. So, and then when they do actually look into the work, there's this reveal and the reactions are generally great. I, I, I love the fact that once they figure it out, there's this element of excitement and they want to grab somebody and say, whoa, you got to check this out. And then they start looking around and they need more. They got to like, and once again, you see that another peephole, uh, it's that voyeuristic tendency that you just can't, you can't resist it. You have to know what's behind that peephole and then you move on. And you know that's just the point of the work. I, I think it's really important that people are adventurous and that people are willing to get physical with the work and really see it at all of its angles. And um, they have to figure it out. They have to like kind of just be like, okay, how much am I willing to put into this to experience this work? Mm -hmm.